Okay, um, I've got a working document for you to take a look at, and I've done a little bit of thinking about this. So, do we want to go basically through the? Um, you want me to go through an overview of what I'm thinking, and then uh, start with an overview, and then go through some of the details. Or do you have an agenda for today, like how we should uh, pursue this meeting? Yeah. So the agenda was just going to be to check to see if you had any follow-up questions from our last call, uh, just sort of general hero X stuff that you wanted mm -hmm. to chat through, and then uh, to jump right into the concepts and anything you wanted to chat about in terms of. Uh, your thoughts on what a challenge might look like. Okay. No, I don't really have any questions right now. I think um, I kind of studied it enough a bit to kind of understand enough about it. I think the devil's in the details as far as the parameters of the design. So I think we can go right into that. Um, yeah. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Or anything? Or No, just excited to see what you've dreamed up since we last spoke. <laughs> okay. So let's do it. Uh, would you mind taking a look at that document? Are you in there already? I'm in there. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Excellent. So so the concept is, I won't look at the document right now, I'll just go through a brief overview and then go into some of the details as d detailed in the document. But the idea is we've got, let's start with some small project like a cordless drill construction set, an open hardware project that would involve a lot of people. It would produce a really tangible, valuable product so right now I'm thinking, so I'm thinking of framing it around the open source microfactory challenge, but with a very tangible fr product up front. But the challenge does include that microfactory aspect, in the sense that we're building in the capacity to produce this item that we're designing. So part of the challenge is that we develop some of the production engineering, and on a small scale, that is 3D printers, some jigs, uh, hand tools as well as a CNC circuit mill, because that's what would go into a, a cordless drill. So I was thinking to, from that, go to, because we want to go on a construction set approach, we design the drill as a very highly modular item, so you can break it down, like just like you mentioned last time, into modules to make this uh, tangible and uh, parallelable and get a lot of mileage out of the design process, and then uh, so on one level, it's the technology aspect, but there's several levels. The other other part is spawning design challenge capacity out of this as well. So that say we develop in the first part of the project, we develop the actual cordless drill. And we're talking about industrial grade quality. And that's why I actually wanted to do a pretty big reward because we're not talking about some you know something that you just make on a couple of weekends and it breaks after a little while. I'm talking about a real industrial tool that can be done by open source 3D printing. And of course, you're going to source some parts off the shelf. But the goal would be to go as much into the distributed manufacturing capacity as possible. Now, why a cordless drill? A cordless drill is a billion dollar market in the United States alone. So I looked at some of those numbers. Black & Decker, I think, is the leader. Uh, but altogether, it's a billion dollar market annually. And if the US is a quarter of the world GDP, let's assume a $4 billion market worldwide per year. And w the big item that this addresses is the throwaway nature of these things. So personally, from our history here, we do extreme manufacturing workshops. We run workshops where we build stuff. We build houses. We build tractors. We build 3D printers in a workshop setting where we build those in a day or a weekend. And I can tell you right now that we go through a lot of cordless drills. They get banged up, they just break. We, you know, we we have to get like 12 new cordless drills a year, you know, things like that. So, you know, there's some costs, you know, say 500 bucks a year right there. But for any contractor, anyone who actually understands this, they, they know that um, you go through tools like, like crazy. Um, even the super high quality ones, you're expected a few years of lifetime and then you throw them away because one part breaks and you cannot really fix it. So by doing the open source design, we're, we're promoting this environmentalism, like a tenfold efficiency increase in material productivity because you can always replace or remake a part yourself or from, from easily accessible parts. So that's the motivation for the cordless drill. It's a very tangible thing. It applies the craze of 3D printing that's quite current. It could get into materials like rubber and plastic not metal, um, but just basic 3D printing. And 
I was thinking that in the second phase of this, we would spawn this as a, because we're designing this as a construction set, like you got a battery pack, you got a body, you got a motor, you've got a tool head, you've got the gear mechanism, you got a clutch, etc. You got the switch, you got a battery charger. All those are modules. So think about a universal uh, cordless tool construction set where we then can talk about, okay, well, what about putting on a different head? Can we make this into a reciprocating saw? Can we make it into a circular saw? Just like there's some power tools that are kind of like that right now. But I was thinking that in the first phase, the first six months, we would do the cordless drill itself and then branch out or, or even in parallel uh, spawn it that we're saying, okay, now we can do all the other tool heads. You know, maybe even like a mini lathe, a little bands or various things that are common as power tools. So um, with that, we can involve, like I like the first robotics model where basically they get a bunch of kids together and they, they do challenges to build robots. Well, here we could do something like that where if we have the basic construction set defined, then we can have challenges. Okay, build a crazy but functional power tool, you know, things like that. So we can actually add that next level to a first robotic like program where robotic first robotics for example is education in this example we can actually have education and real production so real innovation on real tangible goods so the first part is the technology but this, the other parts are then documentation teaching and entrepreneurship so at the end of the day is what I'd like to see this this do is spawn a lot of small enterprises like every city can make it make its own cordless power tools you know so that would be the idea for down the road but we want to in open source we want to see this as a real good example of what the open source innovation can do that it's absolutely crazy open source but all these small enterprises can can arise from this because of the economic value of the product so uh, does that make sense? Do you have any questions at this point? Or Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so it seems like you, you chose to dive right into a big project first instead of starting with something more like a story challenge or sort of an inspirational, smaller challenge. Uh, it could be that we can phase it. It depends how we phase this out because I told you kind of the, the picture, the overall picture. But, um, and let's maybe go to the slides. I want to show you a couple of things. Like, for example, water... Okay, let's let's go to a couple of slides and, I, and I'll answer your question. So here's the page two shows the modules themselves. That's a simple simple idea. Uh, let's see. The one I wanted to share is how do you phase this out? Um, in particular, can we phase this out such that? Let me see. There's a slide I had about collaboration goals. Where is that? Um, look at the uh, crowdsourcing on sli slide five. What if we open this up as we can crowdsource a bunch of the initial stuff? Like, uh, what are the power tools we want to we want to develop? What are what's even the software, the open source software that we use to do the design work? Um, but we can involve the audiences up front saying okay well what are um what are all the tools we want to develop in this challenge itself because we're going to say this is a construction set but what exactly are the tools that we're after and we can we can get some engagement from that part where say somebody has a pet peeve on a tiny bandsaw that they always wanted to have but doesn't really exist yet uh we could leverage a lot of interest from all kinds of different people so on the crowdsourcing part we can um do some other things like also fu crowdfunding the the seed money and stuff um, and even up to like I, I would see a process manager uh, managing this project that uh, hopefully we can possibly hire one from the proceeds um, but I think the answer to your question is that we can st start small by saying okay this phase we just select the tools that we want and maybe I don't even know if there's a prize attached to that. That could be just crowdsourcing up front. But let's, let me just cover one more thing. So uh, the other thing is, as far as the money aspect, I think I could probably, within a month time frame, gather 100K from interested parties who are in the open source community already who are excited by this kind of a concept. Okay, we're using open source. We're using open source 3D printing. 
So in particular, like Lil Zbot, uh, Jeff Mo, CEO, talked to him about this idea of the, the cordless power tool. And he said, yeah, I'll throw down 10K for that. So get like 10, 10, 10 people at 10K, uh, start that. And then second, let's crowdsource more. So open that up to the public saying, okay, this is our project now. And then uh, hopefully get, I would try to pursue corporate matching. Like they would match in a, in my write-up, I, I said five to one. I don't know if that's realistic, but I mean, if we're going to do something that's actually professional grade, like real quality stuff, I think let's just go big. But I mean, so, so tell me what you think. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a really aspirational goal. Um, it, it looks like it might be uh, the, the crowdsourcing slide we're looking at. That might be almost you know a couple years of work, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as uh, getting to the level of we're actually saying we've got this million bucks? Yeah, just, I mean, running and executing the ideas, uh, getting mm -hmm. that feedback, putting that into the next phase, mm -hmm. developing the next community, uh, finding the funding, rolling that over to the next challenge, doing the bigger project about the drill. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that might need to be open for six to eight months itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, those pieces and parts just, they start to add up after a little they while. They do. You've got the, the big plan laid out, um, but, you know, just in terms of uh, seeing how crowdsourcing sort of on a platform like HeroX works, I think that, mm -hmm. uh, as you said, the devil's in the details, and I would just sort of, you've got a really great organization here, but I'd say work on the details for those upfront beginning parts okay. first before you get too many details down the road, right? Because you don't know what you're going to learn and and asking people what uh, tools they want. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe, you know, you've identified that the drill is an awesome target, but maybe other people really want something different. Mm -hmm. uh, does that change what you do with the, the drill or, or are you sticking with that? You know what I mean? Like, this is an example of how learning something in the first phase might change what the details are for the second. Yeah. Um, I mean, one thing to go at would be, so that's the overall program, but I mean, I would just say, uh, what is the difference between how we're meeting our needs versus the needs of the community? I think um, we definitely would like a cordless drill. Do you think we can just say, okay, phase one, next, you know, next one year, or six, you know, six maybe six months of prep and and spawn it in like say six months from now, and um, run that challenge for like a good six months or something. Um, but can we, what would you think about just saying, okay, right now we're going to do the cordless drill and then worry about the other tools later? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a great, great goal. I mean, you've got the use case for the drill. You've got the, the market identified. Uh, it, it's a great project for sure. Um, in terms of uh, the, the phasing for seeking funding for that kind of project, would mm -hmm. you, uh, I, I think my recommendation would be to, to get the details up on the HeroX site. Mm -hmm. and have a, a pre-registration page where you mm -hmm. can start collecting people and showing people that site and circulating it and using that as your framework to ask people uh, for, for the funds for it to say everything's all ready to go. Uh, this is what it looks like. You can get input on it, on the design and on, on what people think you should be asking for. And I think that'll be a really powerful tool to really show people the tangible competition uh, mm -hmm. before it launched. Okay, so I'm, I'm starting slide number two. So let's talk about rollout then. So, okay, so post on Hero X. Um, and then what would we post on Hero X at the initial point? So we say cordless drill. Uh, here's some of the properties we're looking at. And then use that. So is step number two to use that to get the 100K or do the 100K before that? Have a phase in the background, which is just well it seems like post on hero x first and then use that as basis yeah. for yeah that way you can show the people what that what that page looks like how people interact with it i think the vision laid out there will be really powerful for the fundraising okay so use that as a basis for the 10 times 10k and then would you agree that so so what do you think about the idea of, of then opening it up to, so, so I mentioned open it up to, to crowdfunding and then 
uh, based on steps one through three go to match go to uh, corporate sponsors say does that make sense or what, what would you say yeah for sure I mean you might consider going to corporate sponsors independent of two and three uh, and just treat them as you know part of the, the funding I mean it might not be matching maybe they'd have some other interest in it uh, yeah I think that the the approach there would just be to, to engage them as quickly as possible and if matching is something they're interested in then you can come back to them later and if they're willing to put up money without matching then you know you've got it up front uh-huh so um Okay, so when we go to the say the corporate sponsors, I, I know I, how I can pitch to say the open source hardware community. You know, I just tell them the same old, same old, and they like they like the. I, I think you know, in the open source hardware community, they already understand the vision of open source and potential development, potential uh, leverage of that development method. What would I say to the corporate sponsors at that point? So we're saying we're currently raising a hundred k for this challenge. Um, I mean, what would you say at that point? I mean, and do you think, what do you think of the magnitude of the funding? Like 100K and then going up to a million? You, do you think that's realistic? Should we go for that? Um, it, it's hard to say. Um, what, so you're thinking for the, the drill project that, um, that one person or one team would come up with a, the whole integrated design or you would have separate competitions for different modules or how do you think about phasing just the drill project itself yeah yeah so okay so the notes on that are uh, there's for the drill the basic idea is to of course break it into modules define so in any kind of a parallel design problem you want to define the interfaces clearly so we, we can say here are the interfaces now design the parts that go in between them so there's like eight interfaces for if you look at the simple diagram of a cordless drill there's like eight interfaces in there and we can say base we we provide up front the requirements and specs including the performance specifications like for example this thing needs to drain its entire battery uh, without overheating or it has to drill 200 holes through wood with a half inch bit etc like like various pr basic performance specifications weight size power uh, battery life etc we at in parallel we just start everything we say okay it's design all the modules everyone works on the modules but the idea there i'd like to push the idea of collaborative development which means we say start either like on hero x or on our wiki start your log which would include a development template basically where we have all the different development steps that you need to go through to do a complete product i'd also like to have we can generate a burn down graph for that so everyone would have that I would actually like to see if people can keep their hours on their log and just daily log of what they're doing so that they the rewards are given on based based on how much they document so if people are documenting if somebody else picks up their design which will be in CAD an open source CAD um, then they actually get points not only if they actually make a design but also if someone else uses their design uh, component or something like that so so make it make sure that and the reward structure I think that's gonna be one of the not the reward structure but the the judging of it that's that's very tricky I mean because how do you track you can never really track contributions accurately when there's so many people contributing but I was thinking we can simplify that by uh, having the judgment be based on not the fact that you do design design could get some contribution some value in points but the bigger value would be okay here's a prototype here's what works so so say somebody 
you know, somebody's just a designer, well, they have to get together with someone who's a 3D printer or something. They actually have to step up to that physical challenge. And that's why I actually wanted to raise the price up pretty high so that, you know, people are motivated, even though you guys say that, well, it's not really the monetary reward, it's the it's other types of rewards that uh, play in here. But But what I would see happening is that we might have some kind of a grand prize. We might have like 20 small prizes. You know, maybe like do like a a grand prize. You know, top three, and then maybe 20 of the top top 20 contributors, uh, people who have contributed all types of design, and so forth. And then maybe just the rest would be just a bunch of small prizes, like a thousand dollars, if some requirement they, they they got a sufficient number of points according to our requirements which once again devil's in the details i think that's going to be the hard part of actually des designing how you're rewarding points uh because i mean i think that's that's of course very tricky um, yeah so the judging scorecard is going to be really important to yeah say. yeah uh in order to be most likely to win you're gonna have to do you know post to the wiki post this but also uh contribute so much to design mm-hmm Yep, yep. Uh, so we would reward people based on not only design but documentation, since the end goal is documenting up to viable enterprise. So we always talk about distributed enterprise that we actually make it easy for somebody to run a business like that. And what I'd like to see on our side is that we generate the full documentation necessary to train somebody to do this as a as a business. So. All that documentation would be very important for the subsequent phases, which would be about entrepreneurship training with this and the potential design contests where we're linking the the design and real production in one as part of kind of reinventing education, wherever that may be applicable. Um, but how do and we roll? Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say you talked a little bit about the interfaces on yep. the, um, the drill itself. Are, are you going to pre-design some of those interfaces? Are those going to be set out for people? We can make basic specification requirements. We would do some design on that, enough that it's constrained enough, but perhaps not over-constrained. So we might say the battery has to connect to the handle using this square plug shape that's so forth but we might not give the everything we might give we'll give enough to be sufficient and interoperable so that somebody can design the handle for example independently because they even if the battery pack wasn't designed yet we could, this next person can go uh, independently because the interfaces are designed so there's no bottleneck in the overall design process and also, one big thing that I think would be really valuable is the open source 3D printed motor. Like, if you look at the link, th those actually exist, but they're not open source. Um, let's see, uh, just to show you how incredible some of this content out there already is. Um, where was that thing? Yeah, the, the Instructables link? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I've got that. That's up. the prior art. That's, that's pretty cool. Like, that kind of stuff where we're we're focusing on like the reward specification would be uh you get good points for making it a scalable uh construction set kind of a design like so if you do the if you design an electric motor you also produce information on okay how would you make it a little bigger or how do you make it a little different shape so that so that people would be rewarded on how much documentation about the design rationale they provide such that we're creating a true construction set with ambitious goal being that like if this is done properly i mean can this how much can this impact actually transform an industry you know that's that's always the question uh, because i don't think we have really seen any great examples of open source just diffusing so widely i mean except of course for the 3d printer you can you can say the 3d printer is somewhat of a success story of open source because all the companies today the the major companies of today are based on an open source reprap project. Uh, and one of the leading companies, Lulzbot, that I like, is also a fastest growing computer company in the United States. Uh, so so there is some, some case to be made that open source has dominated an industry completely. Uh, outside, of course, for the MakerBot enclosure, 
when they went proprietary. I don't, I don't know if you've heard about MakerBot that they were based on an open source project and they closed it up. But you can say for all practical considerations, the entire consumer 3D printer industry has been started through an open source project. So this would be a an example where we can show that and make it more visible even where we see, okay, now all these open source modular uh, power tools are coming out there and they're becoming the norm just like the the open source 3d printer kind of normalized or spread the 3d printing to the masses pretty much so yeah. uh, th I think the potential there is great um, but to make it really succeed we have to just provide like really quality documentation so I think I think we can do a lot of breakdown okay one is the modules that we can say people are competing for but also other parts would be various pieces of documentation, like all the jigs that are involved. So I could see like right now pretty much easily like 20 or so modules that we're designing for. And uh, I mean, that's a significant amount right there. There could be a, so I'm considering like a grand prize and then a bunch of smaller prizes, but that's, that's of course up for debate um, as we get this going. Yeah, I mean, I, I think part of the consideration is how much you want um, a, a collaborative design versus... Yeah picking amongst uh, the best of a number of uh, different ideas and then like open sourcing the integration. Uh, so, right. Yeah. Uh, it would be nice that, what do you think is the best idea there? Because it seems like, I mean, just both levels, one is the individual modules, two is the integration. I mean, do you think there's a strategic point to take to consider how we do that? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, so there's risks both direction. I mean, if you say, you know, uh, we want the best design for the body handle, right? That person uh, probably isn't the person who's going to have the, the skills and know-how for maybe the battery pack construction. Mm -hmm. Like that's just, you know, the ergonomics of holding the handle is totally different than the electricity of the battery pack. Mm -hmm. Uh, right. So, so how do you get the person with the ergonomic design to work together with the person with the electricity design? Uh, uh, and how do you get other people's input on the the designs uh, without sort of uh, ruining the best ideas? Mm -hmm. So, do you take uh, do you take twenty different ideas for what the best handle design is? and then pick the best one and then uh, say this is the handle design that we're moving forward with and open source uh, that as the winner and then you know start building from there or do you ask everybody to collaborate on what the handle design looks like? We'd want to create the incentive structure for collaboration. Um, that's That would be the ideal setting. Um, are you suggesting that it's it's one way versus the other is harder, or they're both equally challenging? They're, they're both equally challenging. I think that um, as as it gets more collaborative, your scoring and point system for awards has to be more about um, uh, effort and results rather than um, being scored. I, I guess uh, it has to be more a uh, objective score based on something rather than uh, subjective opinion. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if you have people contributing uh, to like a wiki or something and mm -hmm. people offer a number of different designs and then people tweak those designs uh, so, you know, the, the more mm -hmm. people that are utilizing your design versus another design you get more points for that than, than a design that nobody is using or picking up or modifying. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, basically the the winner is kind of like the community of developers is helping you select the winner because people are publishing their designs openly, especially with a wiki. Right now we're installing a 3D embedding tool for the wiki so you can view your 3D design, you can pan and zoom and so forth. So you can easily see, okay, this is what this looks like. So when more and more people download that or use it and as, as long as we can track that then that designer can get more points 
but the bottom line is what does the end product look like does it have the performance specifications so we'd have to design the reward to keep that in mind but ideally we want to have everyone's just eating up each other's contributions and building upon them just stacking one on top of the other so we don't have a bunch of individual like parallel efforts they're actually yeah. stacking one on top of each other as much as possible right yeah so in, in that case i think it maybe there isn't a grand prize maybe it's not worth it to have one huge prize that's set apart from the others maybe you do mm -hmm. just have the, the 20 sub prizes okay and basically yeah. based on a point point system that's developed mm -hmm. yeah and then uh, maybe the one of the final rewards is uh, you know an invitation to, to integration day where you, you get together uh, and actually build mm -hmm. it right you've got all these designs on the internet and people are working but you get them together you have a meet and you've got the 3d printers and you've got everything all in one place and they actually get to, to get their designs out there into the real world together yep yep um part of grand prize yeah so so enter the social and and um social aspect of the part of the final des final prize um integration day where we build the thing or something like that where we build it or something um because until then you know the specs that you've set out are theoretical you don't know whether they're going to meet it or not right you've got to actually test it to see whether the assumptions are true that's correct and and then the question was i was thinking that if we really let the crowd do the walking here then they actually have to build it and the greatest amount of of points comes to those who actually show data so data and results and product testing are part of the development process so basically the more a, a any person gets through the entire development process and they could build of course upon everybody else's work and maybe like someone comes in and they see oh wow this cool design is here already uh, but nobody built it yet I'm just gonna build it well maybe they get a good you know they might get a good reward for just doing that but of course once again we have to weigh how much real actual effort went into the design process and that's why I was actually suggesting that timesheet so we grade people on burn down, timesheet, visible contributions, and up file uploads, and so forth. So, but once again, we have to really get clear on what what that whole reward structure looks like, uh, which which then brings the case for okay, if the prototype has actually been made as part of the reward process, uh, what would that social prize be at the very end? Maybe it would be some some kind of a, a gathering. Uh, I do like the idea that. The top winners maybe get invited to uh, some kind of a clash um, of titans, <laughs> so, something, something where we actually, uh, yeah. What are your thoughts so, on that? Mm -hmm. One of the things uh, that you mentioned in there that just gave me a little bit of pause was um, not everybody's gonna have access to a 3D printer, right? Right. Uh, so maybe there's a special subset of prizes for um, you know physical prototyping. Uh, that that's separate, so you don't give people an unfair advantage that have a three D printer at home. Mm -hmm. So how how what what else could they do? I mean, because naturally we're going to reward some points for design aspects. What else? Um, design aspects. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, the sort of public aspect of being the cream that rises to the top in terms of design. Uh, I don't have a good grasp on how exactly that scored. Maybe something to do with um, you know number of edits on the wiki or mm -hmm. number of uh, you know alterations to your work. Yeah, uh, yeah. We'd then, have to we'd have to come up with an algorithm, but we also want to you know hide the algorithm, the exact exact algorithm, so that people yeah. don't game the system. Game yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so create enough of guidance that okay, this is kind of in general what we got to do, but don't necessarily reveal the, reveal the details. But we will have to have those details. And the trick would be to um, make the yeah get that algorithm to be as simple as possible, because otherwise it could be a, a mess, and, and people might get pissed for not 
you know they're contributing but not getting rewarded in which case the idea of the multiple you know you pretty much get as much reward as the points like the point system where it's a pretty much a gradual um, bunch of awards uh, that would be easy I mean the easiest thing would be that you pretty much you know good down to like you know five dollars I got one point for this design another person got you know a thousand points they get ten thousand dollars but something like that even and I don't know if I mean how is that is that executable within hero X that you pretty much roll out a ton of different rewards yeah so there's a couple of different ways you can think about that you can actually uh, split up so you can create a, a like a channel page that's got the vision on it that says we're trying to create a drill this is why it's important this is how you get involved and then you could create a number of sub challenges that say uh, this challenge is for the body this challenge is for the battery pack uh, mm -hmm. and then you could split out sub rewards in each one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one way. Or you could just say uh, define the prizes in one large challenge as well. But, mm -hmm. uh, I think in this case the sub challenges might work really well. Okay, sub challenges. Yep. Uh, sub challenges that they're almost like are they all parallel or they're going to be like bottlenecks? Like once you get to this then you get to the next phase. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. I mean, how, how do you, um, is, is time the only end factor here? I mean, how do you say that uh, if, if everything's collaborative, how do you call a certain component done? Well, we say that, one, you have to meet specifications. So this thing can drill 200 holes in, you know, half inch holes in a two by four, on a single battery pack, you know, st stuff like that, various performance criteria. Second is the time, of course, so we ha we probably set a, a particular window, right? And then at that window, whatever steps, uh, whatever metrics people have accomplished, you reward for that. But I think the reward should be like, okay, if this hasn't been accomplished, then nobody gets a reward for that. We, we have to s state that up front, like, for example, it has to last, like, the final things towards industrial performance is really how long does it last. So you'd have to actually make it, make it go through destructive testing. Like, you know, you, you charge it, you know, you actually do charge discharge. You know, how many times, like under load, like, so you say you're drilling a hole or going against some resistive load and you just went through like a hundred battery packs and then at the end of that, the performance or strength of that, drill decreased like 10 percent or something you know like down to that level like that's that's what would say okay this thing meets you know meets the performance specs of a ryobi or whatever uh, uh, massive uh, brand name out there is and be strict about it and and then maybe just say okay well if we reach 75 percent of that we get 75 percent of the reward or something i don't know something something to, to that effect but i think the the power we have here is to get an amazing level of product development uh, I think in somewhat of an unprecedented way I'm not really sure who has done this kind of a challenge for a physical product that meets or exceeds industry standards so I think the it's, it's a nice exciting area to to explore how we can hack industrial design yeah yeah for sure I think uh, the the scoring aspect of it uh, and the participation aspect of rewards I think that'll be a fun conversation to have as you work on mm -hmm. the funding. Um, you know, maybe that's something that one of the partners would be really excited to contribute uh, in terms of being able to help uh, uh, put together that algorithm or that scoring mechanism. Mm -hmm. Okay, definitely. Uh, that's something we can engage people with. Um, some more things. So, what are your thoughts on um, so timing so we want to go with so should we think about and maybe restrict ourselves outside of setting the big vision up front but for the timing we say okay we're gonna go for a year we're gonna go like six months to prepare and then run the challenge for like six months let's say something like that yeah that's that's workable um, do you, do you think, uh, based on your experience with this kind of product design 
projects that, that six months will be sufficient. Short. How long do you think? Uh, if it's going to take six months to do the work, um, I'd say think about uh, two or three months to assemble the right community of people that want to participate, and then give them six months to do the work. Okay, that sounds good to me. Um, Just make sure you factor in the uh, the work and effort it'll take to to get the right people to the site and prepped to, to do the work. Um, maybe that happens during that uh, that prep phase, during the six months of prep. Maybe you're, you're pointing people to that HeroX Challenge page and saying, sign up here to hear when we go live. Maybe you've got a big community waiting for the, the rules and guidelines and you're ready to go and then you run six months, but uh, that might be a decision you have to make closer to launch based on the size of the community you've got. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's launch defined as? Launch is when we make the HeroX challenge li the page live, or or that's pre-launch. Uh, that's pre-launch. Um, that's a, like a pre-registration page. I think uh, launch is when people can start. Um, uh, in this case, uh, scoring points. When you can start contributing in a way that affects the outcome. Okay. All right. Um, let's see if I wanted to bring up any more points here. So, talked a bit, a bit about modules. I mean, that's a technical question. Yeah. So, I think at this phase of the game, do we want to confuse it by saying, you know, all these other potential power tool heads? maybe forget about that in the phase one we can say phase two we're going to get based on the results of this we're going to have the actual cordless power tool in general construction set challenge after that would you say yeah i, I think you, you just uh make it clear what the opportunity is in the future right you know if if you take the body and the battery pack and start attaching other things to it you know you can create almost anything you want right mm -hmm. uh and just uh lay out how easy it would be to, to change either uh, the chuck type or the gear type in order to make a new uh, product, but that the first goal is to create the drill and then be able to use that as a platform for other tools. Okay, so if we were to do another challenge for the construction set, that means we would fundraise for that after this, or is this something we include at this point? Um, I don't know. That's tough. I mean, I think uh, your position for fundraising would be really strong if the drill project is a success. Yeah, I think that's... So if you can say, this is what we produced, uh, don't you want to get in on the next one? Yeah. I think that's a really powerful place to start from. Absolutely. I, I think we shouldn't confuse with any other other power tools when you say it that way. I, I think that's good. Just, just one step at a time. Um, now the production engineering side so in order for this so so the we're calling it the open source micro factory challenge um so we have to back that up so this is okay we're we're setting up a small factory to produce these things anywhere that means some production engineering that means parts have to be easy to make accessible materials a, a totally distributive nature act kind of enterprise which includes some of the production tools to make this including 3d printers uh, 3D printer, and there, I think there might be a CNC circuit mill. Just some of the basic circuits, say, for the charger. So we focus on, okay, DIY or open source production tools. In this time around, it would be the circuit mill and, and 3D printer. And we definitely want to make sure that's part of the reward structure, okay? Design the best production system for this drill itself, including, like, maybe we say, here's the best jig for winding the motor. Uh, and maybe no one gets to that. Maybe everyone finds out, oh, the, these open source 3D printed motors really don't work. We're just going to go with a commercial one. And that might be the case. But uh, we still open up that challenge. Maybe that reward will not be attained. So so we have to be open to that. But I do believe the, in order to pr promote the enterprise aspects, we want to open this up um, to the production tools themselves so it becomes much larger than this is just the drill this is the micro factory challenge and we're starting with this drill 
as our positioning uh, for it for a quick immediate success of a tangible item yeah for sure I it just uh, I think that the the explanation and vision is going to be really important for laying out what the big picture is but then also explaining how the drill fits into that and what steps need to be taken first and what's most important and how I think that um, the, the part about manufacturing and production uh, that might be a really important part of the, the eventual scoring aspect. Yeah, because that's where the rubber hits the road. It's the, these are more than the design, so they might be weighed accordingly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see any more points here. So manufacturing technology, collaboration, yeah, and of course uh, open source hardware association and open source initiative compliance software and hardware. Uh, reward structure is based on building each other's work. Wiki is used for contributions. Could the social network on HeroX be used as, like, we would say, okay, part of the reporting, you have to report on the HeroX page to let people know that, hey, I just got this. So basically make it that the sharier you are, the more credit you get. Um, would the HeroX platform be appropriate for that, or...? Because we can do something like a Facebook page, maybe do a little custom platform, um, or just a simple That's thing right. on a wiki. Or Yeah, the HeroX page has a forum, which might yeah. be really good for that. Um, one of the other ways that uh, you could perhaps think about um, having people share their work is through like a HeroX entry. We can make those entries public and people can see them. Uh, so if somebody makes oh. a contribution they're particularly excited in, and wants to share that, they could submit that entry and say, this is where that info lives on the wiki, this is why I think my contribution is important, uh, that sort of thing. So, and a HeroX entry, does that also mean they'd be actually running another contest themselves, or? No, that means that, uh, you know... On their profile. Uh, well, on the, the challenge page itself. So they say, uh, I was working on uh, the, the clutch assembly, and mm -hmm. uh, this is my contribution, and this is what I did, and then that'll show up under the you know, clutch assembly subcontest as an entry so people can see. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So use, uh, so would you say that wiki reporting as well as HeroX social network, the challenge page, because you, you are calling Hero X a social network, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So I think between Hero X also and the wiki, up. right, that would be sufficient for reporting? Yeah, and there's the forum as well on Hero X where people can have conversations and you can set up conversation threads about different topics and stuff. So mm -hmm. that could be another mechanism for that as well. Are the forums uh, challenge specific or there's a general forum as well? They're challenge specific. Okay. Yeah, that, I mean, so discussion happens on forums, people report on the challenge itself, and the wiki. Okay, sounds good to me. Um, okay, partnerships. What are your thoughts on some of the partnerships at this point? I mean, do, do you have any specific... I mean, we can just go, you know, go to the open hardware community, then probably think about... I mean, related manufacturers, I don't know if we want to go to Black & Decker for support. <laughs> Do we? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Um, we might. You know, I know, like, like, uh, uh, like, Home Depot is thinking about putting 3D printers and stuff in their stores. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know if it's worth approaching somebody like that. Uh-huh. That helped them put a lot of pressure on their suppliers, right? And on the ability to come into the store and print something that fixes your uh, tool at home instead of having to buy oh, a wow. tool. Yeah, I mean, if there's some progressive thinkers in the in the big companies, we'd love to talk to them. I, I think it's probably worth a try. I mean, I could not... Why not? Like, if, if someone's progressive there, they could say, hey, we could actually be improving the tool quality. If someone cares about maintenance and lifetime, but that, of course, throws out their current business model, which is to to sell disposable items <laughs> um and but it's worth a try regards, yeah i mean if you think about it uh why is a home depot so big it's because they have to have so many different things there on site yeah they're not 100 percent sure when somebody's gonna buy 
So if they've got uh, the capacity to utilize this open source micro manufacturing, then they can have way less stock in a store and print parts and pieces on demand. And then their overhead goes down a ton because they don't have to have such a giant place. Absolutely. So that, I mean, that's absolutely co complimentary, depending how we, how we look at it. But if they're willing to consider such a thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, we should definitely reach out to them. What about a per, uh, an entity like... Okay. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, I, what the project you're working on right now isn't specifically going to let somebody, like, take apart their Ryobi drill and put a new motor in it and not have to come buy a new one yet. Like, right. it's complementary to the stuff they're working on. I, I don't, like, if you positioned right, I don't think it should be a threat. What if it's positioned that it's actually going to meet or exceed industry standards? Would you see that as a threat? Like, okay, so say we're going to make a drill that's like a Ryobi at a comparable price or possibly lower. I mean, say comparable price, but the advantage is that you can really service it for life. Um, so the, um, the, the bottleneck here isn't uh, the design. It's access to what you need to make and repair it. Uh, Maybe Home Depot doesn't care about the whole drill itself. They care about owning the manufacturing process to be able to come in and print your drill on site and come back and print a new part. Maybe that's more profitable for them than selling the drill itself. Yeah, yeah. That's that's an absolute thing that they can be potentially interested in. And that's definitely forward thinking, but I think inevitable in the future. I, I think that's just what's, what's going to happen in the future. Uh, so each one of those places is going to have their little custom fab shop that's highly automated cranking out yeah, all that, kinds of that parts everybody can go out and buy a 3d printer that's going to be capable of, of making the, the tools that they want to make for for themselves right but if you can go to home depot and buy it from them buy the the time on the machine and buy the uh component uh materials yeah uh, they're still providing a huge service to somebody oh if yeah you're in construction, maybe you don't buy yourself a 3d printer to print drills but you, know, you still want that drill because it meets and exceeds the standards. Right. And you can make a case for how printing on demand is actually going to be more cost effective. So Home Depot takes their cut, but the consumer still wins out, still prices lower. You know? Everybody wins. Yeah. Uh, and then the same kind of logic might go to places like Black & Decker where they say, oh, okay, well, instead of outsourcing to China, we can employ people in Milwaukee here and get comparable prices and better service, etc. I mean, so, and that would definitely be some far, far reaching, some forward thinkers are required to see that. It depends on just who's, who's in their leadership. Yeah. Hmm. No, this is great. That's awesome. I think, uh, let's, let's take a look at, if we've got any of the other, other pages. Um, how important do you think, um, yeah, I mean, the two slides about the roadmap here, so there's cordless drill, any cordless power tool, and then also corded power tools that could be subsequent phases. So the discussion here... Uh, as we said, it, it focuses a lot on, okay, we're focusing on this particular campaign for the next year, but we also have the longer term just visible. How attractive do you think it is? Because for us, we talk about, um, we talk a lot about the universal access system, just like on page, if you go back to page eight, um, with the 3D printer, uh, we talk a lot about the CNC torch table and heavy duty CNC machines combined with all cordless power tools gets you any tool or any light or heavy machine produced so so there's a few critical production machines like for example the tractor if we have a CNC torch table we can cut all the metal for the tractor I mean there's a whole vision of this micro factory uh, kind of the greater micro factory vision so we can we should definitely have a nice infographic on on what the micro fact the local micro factory open source micro factory would look like right I mean that's that's compelling I think a lot of people like that yeah, for sure. Uh, but, but like yeah. I said before, the vision, just make sure, like this is part of that long-term overall vision, mm -hmm. and that's important for people to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, but also then, you know, treat that like the top of the funnel and then help people understand what they're being asked to do for the cordless drill project. Mm -hmm. 
Treat it as the top of the funnel. What do you mean by that? It, it's uh, it, it's broad at the top mm -hmm. of the funnel. So you know, it, that's the long term thought, the background, the vision, and then uh, so that's what you lead with. This is why the overall thing is important. But then as you go down the page, or as people get more information, it um, funnels them closer and closer to what they need to do to participate and make a difference in the project at hand. Yep. Yep. Okay. Let me see, anything else that I might have? Documentation. Uh-huh. Tech goals, audience. Audience is quite broad. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are the next steps then? So I think the, the next steps are, um, I suggest that you start putting together the, the HeroX pre-registration page. Um, so I think we sent over one of the um, uh, either webinars or you mm -hmm. know, just any of the things where you, you know, click the create a challenge button and start setting stuff up. Um, I think that the uh, you know, title, picture, and then the overview of what, what the, you know, the vision and what you're trying to achieve and the explanation around uh, why this is important, uh, that's that's really what's going to be important for the pre-registration page. Uh, and then I think that, that uh, getting that live and being able to start circulating that and using that as your tool to start approaching people for uh, the, the, the prize funds and the operation funds and corporate partners and that sort of thing will be a helpful next step. Okay. That sounds good. So can you review the basic process of the way HeroX works? So we start with pre-registration and we funnel everyone through there before opening that standard for every single project? Uh, the vast majority of projects we do have a pre-registration phase. Sometimes it's short because we mm -hmm. just need a couple weeks to finish the design. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's very long because people are using that page to seek funding. So uh, that's normal. And as you're talking about this, you know, uh, if you start including that page in outreach that you're doing to the communities that you interact with, uh, people can click on the follow button on that page and mm -hmm. uh, they'll get updates when things change on that page. If you want to uh, start using that page as a social hub and ask people for ideas, uh, I mean, if you get a community on that page, you can go to the updates or go into the forum and say, uh, uh, we're designing this, what are your ideas for execution in this area? Mm -hmm. uh, you can start using the crowd to help you design the eventual project itself. Mm -hmm. And the, the phase of seeking subject matter experts, that's something that's done in the background or you'd also use it to seek subject matter experts? Um, the outreach itself is sort of outside a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but you can seek their input once you've got them in your community on your challenge page. Anyone who participates in this, they have to register for the HeroX platform. They like like signing up on Facebook. Yeah, it's really easy. You just um, okay. either link it to another social media and uh, pick a password, or you just give us an email address and a password, and that's it. Okay. It's really to get started. Yeah, yeah, it sounds good. So I think so. Next step is get the page up, and basically, how does it work? So once we uh, did, you guys send? I forget. You guys send the info on how to start the page. Yeah, it's really easy. So when you're on the site, um, you'll just see yeah. uh, there is a create button over on the side. So uh, I can share my screen here real quick with you so you can see what I'm looking at. Yeah. Is it yeah, the become so a hero or? You've got the little, little hamburger over here. Uh, so it's just create. Okay. So you click create and then it'll take you through the flow. Uh, so you put in your title, uh, you put in a couple of other things, and then you'll have access to that page. You can work on it in the background. It won't go live until you want it to go live, so you can work on it and save drafts and come back to it later. Do you have the capacity to, like, once you have the pre-registration phase, does the crowdfunding phase enter at the pre-registration or that's after? Um, we don't do crowdfunding on site anymore. Um, we partner with uh, other places to do crowdfunding. So, you know, crowd, uh, uh, Fundraiser is one of the people that we've partnered with for that. Yeah. Um, so 
So yeah, that's something that we can can make a connection for uh, after we got the page up. If you want to to do sort of community based uh, crowdfunding versus uh, getting the funding on your side independently. Yeah, I mean we like to b do both, and that's that's consistent with what we can do. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the we can have the page uh, link out to the fundraiser page so that if people okay. want to they can go there. Yeah. Okay. So basically, you just send them a link to an external site. Now, yeah. is Crowdfunder the only one you use, or do you recommend? Do you work with anyone else? Uh, it was it's Fundraiser that we've worked with in the past. Fundraiser, um, but okay. yeah, but we'd be willing to to work with other people as well if you wanted to do it on a different platform. Yeah. So so I mean, you guys are still evolving the platform details and st stuff like that. So I mean, lots of things are negotiable, or or it's pretty fixed in terms of structure how you want to run projects. What do you um, mean? I guess, you know, if we want to think of, like, the question, I guess, would be how do we most create a nice ecology of, of how the whole structure of the project, how we're contacting potential funders, how we're potentially getting crowd crowdsourcing of ideas, um, how to think about it. Is that, that's kind of yeah, like I it mean, comes out in a wash, you, you just do it, <laughs> or... Is, is... Uh, so, so some of those will be like services that we provide in terms of like outreach and um, targeted outreach and marketing help. Uh, so some of those things uh, down the line, uh, maybe that that's something that you choose to utilize some of the raised funds for is to um, utilize HeroX services to help with execution type thing. Um, but in terms of just like getting uh, the first steps of the pre-registration page up and uh, helping connect to uh, crowdfunding site is stuff that we would just, uh, you know, help out with uh, to help you get going. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Um, yeah. Very exciting. Yeah, it's great. Uh, so, yeah, start playing around on the site itself and, and start trying to take the, the slide information that you've got and transferring that over to the site and putting your vision up there. Um, you know, if you've got the start of the wiki, um, maybe one of the things you want to do is link to the wiki from the, the challenge page so people can see what that looks like. Um, maybe you want to put some of the vision there as well if that's a platform that's easier to um, put those explanations together on. Uh, and then maybe we'll touch base in a, in a little bit and see how it's going and then see what the next steps need to be to, to help you down the path. Okay, that sounds good. So basically at this point, wait until we got this thing up and then we should set up a meeting at that point or should we set up a meeting now or just wait till we get some content up? Yeah, yeah, reach back out when you've got some content up okay. and uh, we can, I mean, depending, it's going to depend a little bit on, on what you need next. I mean, if the content, if you're happy with it and it's there and you just want to take that and start using it to approach some of the potential funders, um, you know, you don't need to talk to us before you do that. But uh, if, there, if there's something you need help with or want to chat about, we'd be happy to have uh, another call for sure. Excellent, excellent. Are you? How many people do you guys have to to manage the challenge creation? Is are you you and some other people, or just you, or Ch challenge creation? In so far as yeah, like like you're guiding people, like kind of helping people along the path of creating it and running a challenge. Yeah, so for people that are getting started uh, on their own for sort of the DIY path and don't have services at the moment, we've got um, uh, Liz who helps out most of those clients. Um, I'll be available as well. So there's there's me and a couple other people, um, but uh, Liz is the, the primary point of contact for, for people getting set up on their own. Okay, that's pretty cool. All right, so um, yeah, any other comments or on, on how we should approach this or any other suggestions at this point before we start putting the content up or... No, I think uh, just start getting it on the site, see how it looks, and see what troubles you run into, uh, and then we can we can troubleshoot as need be. Okay, and a typical time to to post the challenge, like the pre-registration phase, is that like where you really got to get all your stuff clear, like possibly put a video up there and stuff like that, or uh, is there time down the road? Like this is this is kind of like is this phase like the equivalent of okay, here's you create your Kickstarter campaign, like that's that's kind of where we're at. So that means um, it's going to take some time. It's going to take a little bit of time, but um, 
Mm -hmm. The page can evolve. It's not locked down. You can edit it. You can add to it. You can add a video later. You can change the imagery okay. later. Um, so it's all really flexible. I, I, this is just your, your starting point. It's a place to give you content about what you're looking to achieve. Okay, okay. As you start moving towards opening the challenge for competition, okay. uh, it'll morph and evolve into what you need it to be. Okay, no, that makes sense. Great, great. Okay, we can get going. Awesome. All right, Paul. Well, thanks so much for your time. This is great. Look forward to some traction here. Yeah, great talking to you, and good luck. Reach out if you run into any problems. Okay, thanks. Awesome. Take care, nice then. Bye-bye.